Hello there, people of the Troy Story Parallel Universe. Uh, I am, of course, the eponymous Troy of Troy Story. Tonight, donning a beautiful pair of aviator-style prescription glasses like some sort of 1980s UFO conspiracy theorist with an unhealthy foot fetish. That is my style, and I'm sticking to it. Although, there does seem to be a little bit of screen glare, so I'm going to take this back boy off. Hello to the person who's just joined us. This is, of course, Troy Story episode five. Can you believe we're five episodes in? Things have just gone absolutely off the ball. Hello, Anthony. Good to see you. You're beautiful too, man. I'm just going to give it a little bit of time to see if any other faces join us here in the live boardroom. We're going to see if anyone else shows up. Otherwise, it's going to be a very intimate party down at the Troy Story HQ. I should just have you all round. You could sit in my bed and we could do the Troy Story from there in my bed. That'd be all good. Uh, right, okay, so, so, this is an experiment. It's the first time we've gone live through the Troy Story page rather than just spamming that news feed where Troy Hewitt's personal pages. So everyone who's in here, make yourself known. Speak up in the comments. Let's make it interactive. I want to be able to say, hey to all you are out there all I can see is Anthony Teddy Edwards at the moment um, so we're going to crack on I'm going to give it five more sex. oh hello to the fourth person who's joined us again you know don't be shy voice up give me an insult I can take it I can take it four eyes Oh god, that fourth person's gone, that was clearly too much. Right, so let's crack on. Now, uh, episode five is all going to be about money. Money, money everywhere, but not a drop to drink, as goes the old rhyme of the ancient mariner. Um, so, <laughs> so money, you know, it's an interesting topic, it's something that affects each and every one of us. The wicked claw of money uh, has come into our lives and it will dictate our lives forevermore. Um, so we're going to start off down in America, where a newlywed 68-year-old millionaire from Florida had the shock of his life after discovering that his 24-year-old bride is actually his biological granddaughter. Ah. That is just shit too deep, man. The man, who won several million dollars as part of a Powerball lottery syndicate in 2011, reportedly said... It was like a sense of deja vu, but at the time, I couldn't figure out why she seemed so familiar. Nevertheless, the couple are committed to making it work. There might be an enormous age gap, but it doesn't matter. They're committed to making it work. With the 24-year-old woman adding, I feel that every couple is different and special in their own ways. And I, our bond is so strong that even something like this is not enough to make us give up. Yes, not even an incestuous relationship with an old age pensioner is enough to make this girl give up on her dream of inheriting several million dollars. I think for that, it is respect. Is this Trump Anthony Edwards? No, it's not. That that voice was a bit Trumpish, I must admit. But it certainly it may as well be. Do you know what I mean? Marrying a 24-year-old girl age, age 68, he's, he's doing well. Um... I think the best part about this, though, is <laughs> they didn't actually find out until three months in, right? So three months in, you've been having a relationship. You've been married for three months. You're in bed. You know, you've done all of the grisly stuff that there is to do at that point. You know, shit's too deep. You may as well just go for it. Uh, it it's quite good, the idea that this, this girl has actually spent lo so long trying to convince her friends. No, 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 I love him. It's not about money. No, 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 I love him. But he's your granddad. Doesn't matter. I love him. I love him. That's, you know, my hat's off to her. If I had a hat right now, it would be off. That's why I'm not wearing one, because it is off to that girl. Right, so money can, of course, make us do stupid stuff. Uh, it can make us go absolutely round a Burberry twist. Uh, so it can, and that is certainly the case for our next story. We're over in Minneapolis, where a man said to be in his mid-50s attempted to rob a branch of the bank Wells Fargo, despite the fact that he couldn't speak English. Hello to that fourth person who's just joined us in, uh, in Troy Story. We're having a very intimate episode tonight. There's just a few of us. Uh, everyone else is still reveling in the, in the joy of British Bake Off or whatever it was, but that don't matter. The real shit is here in Troy Story, so thanks for coming along. Uh, so we're in Minneapolis where a man in his mid-50s attempted to rob a branch of a bank even though he couldn't speak English. This is an absolute genius story. The man who entered the bank at 1.30pm handed the bank manager a poorly written note on the back of a withdrawal slip. Uh, so he did. He didn't bother. He just in the car park outside. <laughs> and, the wrote, and the note read, We caution we hold the bomb if one tries to, open bracket, treachery, 
close bracket, will die and said that you would not want to play die. Play die? I don't know. We need $70,000 without the peace. We see you well and your family are waiting for you. Agni. Now, we don't know who this Agony character is. That The narrator actually didn't uh, elaborate on who a a Agony is. He could be anyone. Years from now, English literature classes will be studying the origins, trying to work out who Agony is, but we just don't know. But anyway, it goes on to say, no, open brackets, treachery again. That's a big theme here. Close brackets, full stop, open brackets, NB, close brackets, read four minutes, sent the hostage bomb. We need the $75,000. So this is just, you know, the rate of inflation's mental. In the space of four lines, it's gone up from a $70,000 demand up to $75,000. This robber is not waiting around. Now, I mean, you just wouldn't do that, would you? That's, talk about failure to prepare your bank robbery. Hello to that person who's just joined us. This is the Troy News segment. We're talking all about money and a bank robbery that's gone wrong. Uh, <laughs> so... This, I mean, just Google Translate your threatening letters if you're uncomfortable with your English. You know, would be bank robber or not. Bad grammar will not be tolerated in my camp, Scout. All right? And <laughs> so this story goes on. When the bank manager explained that he couldn't understand, the bank robber demanded an interpreter to translate his letter from his native language of Arabic into English. Things are just getting awkward now. You know, people are starting to stare. There's a massive language barrier, which is embarrassing enough at the best of times, let alone when you're trying to rob a bank and intimidate a large group of people. So eventually they arranged for the colleague at another branch who could speak Arabic to liaise with this man before eventually calling the police. And then he was arrested. So, you know, bank robberies have certainly gone better than that in the past. That was not one of the of the best ones. But nevertheless, um, that was Troy's story, uh, episode five. This is the money episode. Uh, remember to like, remember to subscribe. My aim is to try and grow this this uh, video. You know, it's the aim is to try and like sort of sprout it and let it develop, not the video, the page. What am I talking about? I'm too excited. But yeah, so we've got nearly 100 likes, uh, which is pretty good in the first week. So just keep sharing around. There'll be plenty more new stories up for that. Thank you. Good night.